episode of the season. Can we talk? One. Take one. This is all we're going to do. Take one. Welcome to Can We Talk? I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia. Thanks for watching. And we are now at the final vlog, vlog for this season. We're outside in our front porch, so forgive us if we fan bugs. Yeah. But it was a nice night and we thought this would be a perfect time to do our final vlog for the season, our spring season. So um, today's episode, or it's night now, is actually called... Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. You gotta make a song for how we You know, we, we took a while to do this vlog because we've been so busy. We've been, it's been funerals that we've been going to, mm -hmm. we've been traveling, we've been just... Putting out family fires. Yeah. And so it's been a busy, uh, our last vlog was what, April? Uh-huh. This is June, a busy two months. It's been very busy for us and our marriage and our family. And so sometimes you got to pause. Uh -huh. um, as much as we wanted to to get it in and get it in. I'm talking about the vlog, not sex. <laughs> but we're going to talk about sex. As much as we wanted to, uh, we, we just couldn't. Sometimes you got to say pause. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We paused. And so here we are tonight. Um, we're going to talk about sex. And um, the thing that everybody does or wants to do, but nobody talks about. And the thing about it, my mom, she's now watching these vlogs. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's like, okay, mom, we're going to talk about sex. And you're like, okay, bring it on. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, this is the most talked about oh, topic, but the least talked about topic. Yeah. I mean, people talk about sex all the time. But they really don't talk about it in their marriages. They don't talk about it with their children. Yeah. They don't talk about it within the family. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons why. So there's a stigma attached to sex because the enemy has distorted it and he's he's um he's made it um something where it has been used to do evil and vile things where it's actually a gift that God has given a husband and wife. So this vlog, as we talk about sex, just understand that it is in context of marriage, right. okay? Even though we all may have had premarital sexual experiences, some of us, some may not have, um, Derek and I know that we did, and we um, went celibate our, our year of engagement because we really, really wanted to honor God, honor the gift of sex, and so we went the whole year celibate before we got married. And when we consummated our marriage on our wedding night, it was like we were virgins all over again. It was a beautiful thing. You know, and we paused. That was in addition to what Sonia said. We brought into our marriage our sexual experiences. We brought into our marriage and we both had, had different experiences. My, mine were, was more um, corrupt. Mine was, even though it felt good, and at the time there, it was experiences that, you know, I thought were exciting, but yet the reality is that it was not preparing me for marriage. It was it was actually preparing me for the destruction of marriage. I see. And if you oh. are engaged, or if you are, are mar of course you're married now, but those experiences were really were not to make me a better husband or a better sexual partner. It was. It was designed, my experience was designed to destroy my marriage. Mm -hmm. And and you don't think about it from that aspect, but that's really what it was. And so that pausing for that year for us to be celibate before, you know, we, we took our vows was a year for me to have an introspective look at what were my sexual experiences, what were my experiences in relationship to relationship with women and and I had to really stop and say, no, that wasn't that wasn't something that I know was not God. Mm -hmm. And I really had to go to God and just say, Lord, you know, cleanse me with hyssop. Like David said, cleanse me because I need to be cleansed like that in order for this union to be pure as best as it could have been at the time of me understanding what purity looked like. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why we had to pause to really recollect our our thoughts about sex and what we were really bringing into the marriage because some people had brought those those activities those demonic 
uh, uh, imps into the marriage, not even thinking about it. So if that's you, then, then pause for a minute and say, yeah, I did bring some crazy thinking, some crazy stuff into the marriage and talk about how much has that impacted your marriage now? How much has that imp-? And then pray and say, Lord, remove those imps that I brought into my marriage. So that's, I wanted to touch on that mm-hmm. while we, we uh, another reason why we pause. Yeah, and um, you know, I'm a West Indian descent, descendant and um, one of the things that I've noticed in the West Indian culture is that um, sex is not discussed. It is actually treated like it's vile and evil and it's avoided and it's given that taboo effect. Um, so young girls yet are molested and raped and violated sexually. So many uh, women, not just in the West Indian culture, but specifically in the West Indian culture, I know it's very, very prevalent. And they, they were unable to talk about it. They weren't able to go to anybody to share. Um, their mothers made it a taboo. Their grandmothers made it a taboo. And then they expected them to just sexually develop, grow up, get married. And then after they get married, the first question or the second question that is asked of them is when you're going to have some babies. But the same people that asked them when they're going to have some babies never told them how babies were conceived and allowed them or or inadvertently did not protect them from being violated. And that is a big issue for me in our culture. That's very big. So now I, I know women of West Indian descent that sex is disgusting to them. They don't like their bodies. Everything about sex is associated to guilt or shame, fear, anger, resentment. And it's a trick from the enemy because Satan does not want you to celebrate this thing that God created. And so he has infiltrated generationally and culturally these theories about sex. And when Derek and I do our seminars, we talk about, first thing we talk about is biblical references as to why God created sex. God created sex for five reasons. I'm gonna give them to you really quick, but you can go on our website. He gave them to us for pleasure. He actually created sexual organs and nerve endings so that pleasure would come from sex. So it's a beautiful thing. He created sex for us to procreate so that we could have children. And, 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 and what does he say? Multiply the earth. He created sex so we could know each other better. Because you can't really, really know any, anyone until you really are sexual and naked with them. And that is why it's only for husbands and wives. He created sex for comfort. David comforted Bathsheba after they lost their son. Um, And there's several scriptures around the comfort of sex. And the fifth and final reason God created sex is to keep us from temptation and actually fornicating or having adultery. So he created sex so that it would be within the marriage. And he knew that we would have sexual urges that he would like to see us contain it in the holy sanctity of marriage. So those are the five reasons God created sex. I need to say that so that the people that think that is vile and disgusting understand that that is a trick from Satan. That is not true. It is to be celebrated. So also there's barriers to sex. You know, there's barriers. And so some of the barriers to sex, medical conditions, health reasons, um, getting older, you know, 20 two years of marriage, we had a lot of sex. <laughs> the first 10 years, it was it was just like we were just two jackrabbits in, in just in the woods. <laughs> you know, next, the next five years, it was just we slowed down the jackrabbit, we became kind of like, you know. <laughs> long issues. Long issues, asthma going on, the knees. Knees. <laughs> the next five years now, you know, life. Then you become creative. So there's seasons of it. So so um, some one, some of the barriers is is is, is uh, health health needs. and aging aging he- um, um, children children um, schedules schedules. So you know just yeah. understand that's just part of part of it. But I did want to go into quickly. There's there's erogenous zones yes. in our bodies. Yes. The male has erogenous zones and the female has erogenous zones. Yes. Go to our website. It's on the website, but we're going in to our app. It's on our app. We're going to all ten. 
but but I, I want to I want to say to the men that <laughs> the woman has certain erogenous zones. Okay, mm-hmm. that means that the nerve endings are heightened. Talk there's, about it. There's more nerve endings in parts of the body mm-hmm. that's heightened yes. on a woman's body. You Bring need to understand. It. You just can't yes. go in and attack. Now, that's sometimes it. hold on now. <laughs> there's sometimes that you got to get it in quickly and you just cool. Got it. But you, some things you have to finesse. You have to finesse. Yes. You, gotta, you gotta understand yes. every part of the woman's body and the nerve ending. So I'm just gonna mention one. Uh, uh, just say 8,000. 8,000. Make them go find it. 8,000 nerve endings. Tell them go dig for Gentlemen. it. Gentlemen. Die. Die. Gentlemen. God made, God made a woman's body, but there's the clitoris. It serves only one purpose. Oh. Okay, let me say that again. It serves only one purpose. And if it serves only one purpose that God created in her body, oh. the question is, what, what you, you gonna do, do with it? it? I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so understand that the the body is cre- God created mm-hmm. our bodies, and He created this garage in the zone. Mm-hmm. There's nerve endings in the back of our neck, the earlobe. Um, you know, there's parts of the nape of the, the neck, nape of the neck, inner the thigh. Neck. Mm-hmm. So, so it, again, we understand Nipple. that people, the nipples. Mm-hmm. Scrotus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people think that the, the penis per, the per, the perineum. Perineum. That's mm-hmm. that's the part of the body for the man. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's it's close to the anus in between that scrotum and the anus is that small part, but it is is there and has nerve in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um people think that the penis is an erogenous zone, it is not an erogenous mm-hmm. zone. Right. Okay. The vagina is not an erogenous zone. Correct. Okay. Uh, but we say all that because you have to understand that Finding out the parts of the body of the spouse in your own body is so significant in in, in making love and intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, there's barriers. I know there's been infidelity. I know there's been trust issues. I know we're not, we're not even at that point about sex. But this, we have to talk about it. So forgive us for going right into it. Yeah. Because it's important, but we do know there's other factors why people are not having sex, and we can talk about that later. We talked about that in, in previous blog. But uh, whatever the factors are, they can be improved upon right. if the dialogue is honest, open, right. and transparent. You know, so so this this topic is not about dealing with some of the other issues, infidelity, and why men cheat, why women cheat, and right. all that kind of thing. This That's, is about sex between a husband and a wife. Let's talk about sex. Right. And so. It's important to have a, a a a conversation, and we understand why it's difficult to talk about sex because it's talk it's difficult to talk about finances. It's mm-hmm. difficult to talk about in laws. It's difficult to talk about um, the children, and and so mm-hmm. you're walking around and the and, changes in our body, the changes, and so mm-hmm. we want you to be able to be free. So just like we're talking now, mm-hmm. and we, some of y'all can't believe we've talked about some yeah, of this stuff. Somebody, you're like. What? They talking about that? We should be able to right. talk about it. Somebody's gonna call us and send us a did y'all say yeah, after you, if you wanna if you wanna complain about what we're saying, then you need to go watch another vlog. Right. Because this is what we talk about. Right. We, we found that when we do our counseling, people don't talk about it. No. They they really don't talk about it. So And um, it's unfortunate because then it becomes this tool or it becomes this point of con- of contention. Right. Um, which again is designed for the enemy to do. Right. So the husband feels like he has to be on good behavior to get some. What is some? Right. To, to, to be intimate with his wife, to know her, right. to please her, to comfort her. You know, that it becomes this, this, this bargaining chip. And then the wives, you know, who in my reference that have hard time with it because of how it was a how it was presented to them and what it associates to them they don't want it so the husband feels like he has to do all these things to get it and healing needs to happen right healing needs to happen for the wife healing needs to happen for the husband and the husband needs to understand that sex ain't gonna happen unless the wife is emotional emotionally ready Mm. to receive that act they're the recipient the recipient is that's right ent- you're entering into her uh-huh. physically you're entering into her she's not entering into you oh, that's deep. and so and so emotionally she has to be ready to receive you to enter into her both uh, physically and emotionally and emotionally mm. and if she's not emotionally ready to be entered then she's not going to be ready emotionally physically for you to enter her and you have to learn how to emotionally enter her emotionally right and wives you have to be willing to teach how 
that looks for you individually. It may not look for you like it does for someone else, but it is important that you take the time and teach that because husbands aren't taught. Most husbands are not taught how to be husbands. Did you know that? No one says, son, come, let me show you how to be a husband. Nobody does that. None of the men we've talked to, not Derek, not my father, not no, none of the husbands I know have told me that someone deliberately set them aside and taught them how to be husbands. But so many women said that their moms and their, their grandmas tried to teach them how to be wives. And they didn't discuss the sex. They talked the about cha- cooking. And the challenging thing is, is that... Cooking <laughs> and cleaning. That's how you're going to be a wife. But they tried. Right. I have to give it to them. At least they had a conversation about it. So wives have an expectation of the husband to, to get it. Right. But they weren't taught to get it, then you have a high expectation for them to understand how to how they should come into the relationship knowing how to be emotionally intimate with you. Uh-huh. And so that's what Sonya's talking about. She didn't I didn't learn Sonya didn't teach me until probably five years into marriage. Uh-huh. Probably since we moved to Atlanta. Uh-huh. That's when I was taught. I, I believe that. That's when I was taught how to um no i think you were taught before that i was but, taught but, but you, i didn't you get didn't it. you didn't apply it i didn't, I didn't apply it mm-hmm. and i, I didn't it, it didn't it didn't hit me like an awakening and here's why i did not know that he did not know I, you got to, to teach I didn't know. to teach something <laughs> you have know. to know that the person doesn't know and the wives come thinking that their husbands but you know, know. But by then, there's so much hurt that has taken True. place. There's so much damage, infidelity, trust. And there's so much stuff that has taken place for for them to even get to that point. Right. So we want to leave you with three points. Here's the three points. Let's talk about sex. Point number one, talk about sex. Mm-hmm. You know, s- sit down and have a conversation about uh, expectations, why is it not fulfilling, why we're not having it enough. What, what was your orientation what was your to orientation it? What to is it? what is your association to it? Is it a right. good one? Is it a negative one? Right. So that's number one. Number two. Point number two, set realistic expectations about your sex life, especially if it's been lacking. Meaning that don't talk to other people about what their sex life looks like because it might look very different. Mm-hmm. For real, Oliver? It might look very different for your marriage. Uh one person wanting it every day for a month and one person wanting it every six months is not realistic either way. You have to find a middle ground and begin to discuss how to be on the same page compatibly with your sex. Number three. Point number three. Seek some help. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. Not seek some help from other couples. Seek some help from Seek a professional. Seek some professional help. Professional you know, a lot, a help. There's sex therapists out there. Yeah, too. there's sex therapists out there mm-hmm. uh, to deal with some of those things, uh, the barriers, uh, some of the things that may inhibit you. We from we specialize in it. We have a whole segment on sexual intimacy. Yeah. Um, if you've done our counseling, you'll know. Um, so you don't have to come to us. We go to somebody. Uh-huh. Yeah. Talk, about Talk about it, because if it's the elephant, you know, that pink elephant in the room that everybody sees, but nobody wants to talk about sex is like that for many people in their marriages. Right. And going to a third party helps discuss the pink elephant elephant in the room. So get some help. All right. Closing thoughts. Closing thoughts. We hope that this summer you will actually apply some of the things that we've shared on this vlog. If you haven't watched it, you can go back from episode one through twelve. And hopefully in the fall, you'll be ready because we're going up. We're taking it up a notch. Yeah. We're taking it up. We're going to hit some real stuff. We yeah. did that in this in this season, but we're going to another dimension, Derek likes to call it. Another dimension in the fall. So we want to thank you for your support. I, several of you have shared our blogs with other people. Um, some people have reached out for help because of it. Some of the blog titles were inspired by the questions that came in through the weeks. And we just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for your prayers. And we pray that you'll have a safe and blessed summer. And we also want to share with you coming up, check out our websites. Uh, we are we are going to give you a, not give you, I pay for it. <laughs> but we have a, a project that we're going to present to you 
It's called the Marriage Emergency Kit. It's the counselor in the kit. It allows you to deal with conflicts, uh, resolve the conflict uh, in a very non-verbal, practical way. And go to our website, themarriagemethods.org, uh, press the link, the Marriage Emergency Kit, and you'll see the prototype, you'll see the information. And if you're interested, um, there's a, a place where you can um, place an order without paying for it, but just to show that you are interested. And if you do that, you'll get a 20% uh, discount off of the purchase when it's ready. So it should be coming out at the end of June. So we want to thank you for uh, loving us yes. and being a part of our crazy world, our marriage and our family. Like Sonia said, this fall, we're going to be a little bit more unorthodox. We hmm. want, we, you know, we had the ring light going on. We had all these other things. We're just going to con- go to another place where you see us um, outside of the realm of sitting in front of the camera. Uh, very, very controlled setting. So thank you. God bless you. And uh, Sex is a good thing. Now that you know what you're going to do. God bless you. I will see you in the fall. Bye.